Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video we will talk about compartment syndrome and compartmental anatomy of the foot. Okay, so let's start with the case. This was a 40 year old patient roughly and the question from the clinician was fracture, uh, the base of the fifth metatarsal bone and the symptomatic os perineum. This was the clinical question. So let's dive right into these two questions. I'm not going through all of the case for saving some time. So we can see the fifth metatarsal base here, there is no fracture. Uh, so let's go straight to the perineal tendons. We can see there is some tenus univitis, and if we scroll down, then we can see, okay, there is some mild signal change here, and especially at this level of the perineus longus tendon, just shortly before the os perineum, we can see some internal signal, which is a bit higher. Uh, when we go and look at here, we can also see it here on this plane. And then we can also use the coronal just to see the same thing again. So we got some tiny interstitial tears here of the os, uh, of the perineal's longus tendon, and then some bone marrow edema at the os perineum itself. But it's not fractured, uh, so, so we can think about some form of stress reaction or something like that with some interstitial tears uh, here, and then some corresponding tenosynovitis as well. And the plantar aspect here looks fine. However, when I was looking through the case. What stand out was the edema here in the abductor digiti minimi and also a bit more further than flexor digiti minimi brevis. There is maybe some subtle edema also in some of these other areas here in the forefoot, although the forefoot was not fully imaged. And then when we go back, I think this is really standing out. And at the time, you know, if you look at this, it looks it looked weird. Um, and you can see it's the whole muscle is nearly affected as opposed to the other muscles, we can see there is really something going on in this abductor digiti minimi. Now, the first thing that would come to mind is some form of irritation of the inferior calcaneal nerve as a Baxter neuropathy with the nervation edema or something like that. But that didn't really fit the history. There is no, well, there's maybe a tiny spur, but there's no plantar fasciitis. And also, I think the, the clinical information was not just pain. I think ultimately we learned that there was also some loss of sensibility at its toes or somewhere. I don't really have the exact information. For me, the key to actually solve this case was the realization that in my mind, this muscle looked bigger than what I'm used to. This is more or was more like of a gut feeling. I can't really uh, you know, put this in, in words, but it looked just bigger. And once I had this idea, okay, this looks a bit big, then scrolling through, then I could see some things standing out. So for that, I think I maybe I need something like this. So when we zoom in here, we can see there's some areas where we can see some mild bulging of the muscle. Maybe also here, going further distally now. Here we got kind of like as if muscle tissue is protruding out here. You can see here, going further distally. Here it's not so evident, so maybe we go on to another sequence. Let's try to find the same here. So I think this one here, that was intriguing, and some tiny defect here in the fascia and then some protruding of muscle tissue distally. Then I think a second area here where I was concerned about some form of muscle herniation in the, it was the, idea, the first idea. So going back here to this, uh, we see the other muscles immediately are fine. It's just the lateral compartment here, which apparently has some changes in the muscles. Suddenly I was thinking, okay, uh, if this would be anywhere else, like in the lower leg or something, I would be concerned about compartment syndrome. You can see here, muscles, muscle pieces of muscle, edematous muscle protruding out. And that's not consistent with a denervation edema. So the first thing I googled was compartment syndrome of the foot because I wasn't really aware of that at the time. And then you realize, you know, I just want to see does that even exist? So you go to compartment syndrome, so we can see a case report talking about medial compartment syndrome. So that sounds interesting. So apparently something that exists here, we can't really see any nice images. Um, we can also go down here again on the medial side. Okay, compartment syndrome of the foot. Compartment of the foot here, this is an anatomic study and then chronic exertional compartment syndrome. We know this from the lower leg, this was not really what I was interested in. And then compartment syndrome of the foot case report. So yeah, so there were some case reports which then uh, increased my belief that I might actually having something like this. The next question then was because the case had only the affection of these two muscles here. I need to know, is there any, you know, what are the compartments actually of the foot because uh, you know, it's not something you just need uh, to know if you do regular standard stuff on MRI. So 
um, yeah, you can go over these different things. Here again, this is an example for the medial side. It looks quite the same. You can also see this muscle herniation. So I was getting more confident, okay, this can actually be something like this. So what are the compartments of the foot? Here we can see the compartments of the foot. So we have several compartments, medial, superficial, lateral, adductor, and four interossei and calcaneus. So lots of different compartments. But it confirms the suspicion that we have a lateral compartment where these two muscles are included. So we can compare this here, uh, which muscles are affected. We have really here the lateral compartment here, also there. Yeah, there's a little bit of edema in the other muscles, but not really to the point where I would be concerned that the whole compartment is affected, as you can see here, here, maybe just some mild edema, and this one here is fine. So it's really isolated to this. Yeah, the great thing about this article is, if you want to read it, it's also going into diagnosis of the compartment syndrome, which they talk about here is clinical. You can measure the pressure, which at the point where the MRI was done, nobody was thinking about compartment syndrome. And treatment principles are the same as in any other compartment. You typically should kind of like release the compartment pressure with different approaches. And you can see here on a lateral compartment syndrome, you would do a lateral incision to actually release the pressure inside this compartment, which is also nicely illustrated here. So this is what they would do going through and then release it. So after we informed the surgeon, then the patient went to the OR, they released uh, this lateral compartment and interoperatively the muscle apparently came quite out of it because it was very much swollen, which confirms our suspicion on the MR with these muscle things coming out. So they made a cut here and you can see here on this uh, post-op image and the patient apparently also had uh, paresthesia at the level of the toe so some of these nerves might have also affected the sensibility of the foot and after release this was better again and shortly after surgery patient was uh, pain-free and things went better so this was actually um, a surgically proven compartment or lateral compartment syndrome of the foot. If you want to learn more about MSK radiology, come here to this free community. It's a community for all radiologists at any stage in your career where we share and learn together. So go over there, it's completely free and I'll see you there. Bye bye.